So you've done your research, you've selected the acne treatment from the pharmacy shelf, or it's been prescribed to you by your family physician or your dermatologist. You've been using it for a while and it's not working. And the question is why? So here I'm gonna give you five reasons why you may be having problems with your acne treatment. So let's dive in. The first issue is, are there effective anti-acne ingredients in your products? And the ones we look for over the counter are products that contain benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, retinols, and quite frankly, there are a lot of other products that could also be helpful for acne. Niacinamide, resveratrol, vitamin C. So many of these can support some of those initial core agents to help with acne, but they need to be there. Otherwise, your acne will not improve. If you're given a prescription medication in a gel, lotion, or cream form for your acne, does it contain a retinoid? Names of retinoids are tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, triferritine. Does it contain an antibiotic, clindamycin? Does it contain a product like the medication that is considered to be antimicrobial, benzoyl peroxide? And then there are a multiple of other active acne products like topical dapsone and azelaic acid. So are any of these in your composition of the ingredients of your formulations? And if they're not, then you might need to rethink what you're actually using. Let's now talk about applying your product properly. Many patients I talk to apply their medications directly onto the acne spots. And if you were never taught how to apply these acne medications, I can, I can certainly understand why you would do that. Because you're trying to address and reduce the appearance of those spots as quickly as possible. While you can do that, it doesn't prevent new ones. And the essential part of using these acne medications properly is to make sure you use it on the entire zones where your acne is affecting your skin. We call that the defensive zone strategy. So make sure you don't just treat the spots, treat the entire zone of your acne. And when you apply it, how much should you apply? It's a pea size amount. You can apply it onto your palm, work it in together, and then dab it one, two, three. And the reason I recommend the dabbing technique is because it allows you to, of course, treat the zone, plus also to treat your skin very gently. You can then reapply another pea size amount, work it into your palms, and then apply it onto your cheeks. Okay, and if you need more, then for, for example, for your nose, your chin, the rest of your body, you can keep going with that distribution and then the dabbing technique. Were you taught what to expect when, when you were initially given these medications or prescribed these medicines? Because if you're not, then you might expect improvement in a much shorter time frame, where in reality, it takes much longer. Let's dive into this. It's within the first one to two weeks that we see the major issues crop up, if there are any going to come up, with dryness and irritation. So that's going to be the critical period of time where you need to have strategies to reduce the risk of dryness and reduce the risk of irritation. Issue number two is when you expect to see some improvement. Some improvement usually, if you're using the products properly, takes four to six weeks. Now, most clinical research studies on acne products go out for three months. So many people think it takes three months to see improvement or maximum improvement, but actually that's untrue. It takes a shorter time to see some improvement, but maximal improvement takes five to six months. The reason we can tell you that is because there are two randomized control trials in acne products that go out to six months where we clearly see that 
the level of improvement of achieving clear or almost clear skin almost doubles beyond what we see in the standard time frame for acne trials, which is three months. So by six months, you almost double the response rate for patients achieving clear or almost clear. To reduce the risk of dryness, what do I recommend? Number one, gentle cleansers with no active acne ingredients. And number two, moisturization. So the idea is to start low and go slow. Okay, now let me explain that. With the moisturizers and the cleansers, we look for products that do not contain salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, or any products that are called acid of any type, but salicylic acid, beta hydroxy, alpha hydroxy acids, those are all to be excluded from your gentle cleansers and your moisturizers. The reason is you don't want to compound the risk of dryness and irritation from your active acne product along with that in your cleansers and the moisturizers. It will just make things a whole lot worse. And finally, the issue is going to be about proper selection, patience, and persistence. So now you have some clear ideas why your acne medication might not be working. Is it that it doesn't have adequate active ingredients in the formulation? Is it that you really haven't been taught how to apply it properly and you're simply applying it on the spots? Is it that you don't know when to expect what? It may take a lot longer than you expect and none of these creams necessarily clear you completely but it can always help move you towards your goal. Hopefully this helps you. Follow me, comment, and let me know if you have any questions about these tips.